Hello everybody, this is Jones Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos and today I'm on the Thousand Block of South Charles Street and we are quickly heading into New Year's Eve. Now some of you may be spending New Year's with friends and family, maybe a nice dinner out. Some of you may be going to bed happily at 10 o'clock and having nothing to do with it. But if we were to turn the clock back to say 1989, a number of us would be heading out to Hammer Jacks for what would probably be very a very late and very raucous New Year's Year's Eve. Hammerjacks, of course, the legendary hard rock uh, bar and live music venue. If you smiled when I said the words Hammerjacks or the word Hammerjacks, um, you may be one of the folks who frequent in there. And you might be asking, well, if we're going to talk about Hammerjacks, and that's what we're going to do today, why are you standing on South Charles Street? I'm standing here because, believe it or not, this is where it all began. In 1977, a, a gentleman named, a young gentleman named Louis Principio, uh, who was a contractor decided he wanted to be a bar owner and he found a place here 1024 South Charles uh, it's the uh, building behind me with all the Orioles and the Ravens flags uh, nobles I think it's called now um, it was co-owned with another young gentleman named Bill Strever, and they did a wonderful restoration job on this row house on South Charles Street. In fact, in 1977, Baltimore Heritage awarded it a Historic Preservation Award for its innovative uh, preservation techniques. Back then, we called it a fern-style bar. I guess that was a thing in the 70s that had exposed rafters and exposed brickwork and plants hanging everywhere, presumably ferns. Um, uh, uh, incidentally, if you recognize the name Bill Strever, he went on to help found Strever Brothers, Eccles and Rouse, that redevelopment firm that gave us uh, revitalized neighborhoods all over the city uh, and buildings like the American Can Company and Tide Point, the former Procter and Gamble facility in Locust Point that Under Armour now calls home. Um, but we're talking about uh, Hammer Jacks, not Struver Brothers today. So back to that. In 1977, Principio moved in and uh, it was maybe not as loud as it was going to be, uh, but it was a successful bar. And five years later in 1982, uh, he found a more suitable space to be loud in. And that was on South Howard Street, uh, near where today's uh, Raven Stadium and parking lots are. Now you gotta think of South Howard Street before the Ravens came in, before the Orioles came in. A number of news reports called it an industrial wasteland, but Principio had found a former two-story industrial building next to a brewery, an old brewery, and in 1982 moved in. Here's what one Baltimore Sun uh, reviewer said in 1983 of the bar. He said, I was told the bar was in South Baltimore off Howard Street, but I wasn't told it was in the middle of nowhere on one side of the, our railroad tracks and on the other, a huge parking lot. It may not have actually been the middle of nowhere, but it was pretty much literally under Interstate I-395. Uh, in 1985, the music venue opened and uh, with an opening act on the first night of Eddie Money. And this is really when the legendary Hammer Jacks uh, as a live music venue uh, got its start. Uh, it claimed to be the largest venue on the East Coast and the largest purveyor of Budweiser beer as well. I think I believe both of those. And whether you were into punk rock or hard rock or glam or hair metal, uh, this was the place for you. It is probably easier to uh, say which bands did not play at Hammerjacks than which ones did. But let me give you a little bit of a sample. The Ramones played there, as did Iggy Pop. Joan Jett filmed one of her I Love Rock and Roll videos there. Ozzy Osbourne did his thing there, as did Kiss and Guns N' Roses. Motley Crue liked, D uh, liked Hammerjack so much that when they played at DC venues, they would immediately after the show was over, jump in their limos and head up to Hammerjacks uh, to make it for last call. And Iron Maiden thought so highly of Hammerjacks that embedded in their 1986 album, Somewhere in Time, um, is the name of the bar. Hammerjacks is in that artwork somewhere, if you can find it. When there were no live shows, and there weren't live shows every night, although the bar was open every night, um, they did have rather risque things going on, like uh, Naughty Negligee Night and Best Buns in Baltimore contest. So uh, definitely a raucous time uh, pretty much uh, every night of the week. Um, the Sun describes the place this way, as a haven for big-haired, scantily-dressed, hard rock gals and their long-haired boyfriends in skinny jeans. Um, you can almost hear the sneer coming out of the Baltimore Sun in that uh, description. 
Um, the uh, Hammerjacks building survived an attempt to demolish it to build more parking for Camden Yards, but uh, Camden Yards fell short of money and it got spared then. But what the Orioles did not do, the Ravens did. And in 1997, the owners of Hammerjacks, the Principio family, negotiated with the Maryland Stadium Authority to sell the building so that it could be demolished for football parking. And it is no longer, it is now a parking lot. But that was not the end of Hammerjacks. Its third act, if you will, was in a new space off of Guilford Avenue downtown, not far from uh, City Hall. Another historic building, wonderfully renovated. This Hammerjacks never gained the godlike status of a live music venue as the Howard Street one did, but it did gain local fame for, especially for its DJ, and especially for a particular Baltimore style of music called Be More Sound. If you're not familiar with it, think of dance music with with heavy drum beats, hyper speed, very, very fast. Um, and uh, Hammerjacks was known for that. Um, but it did not last forever. And in 2006, it closed. A developer bought it to build an apartment building that never materialized. But that was not the end of Hammerjacks. Like a phoenix rising a few years ago, uh, it came back. It is now a live music venue and uh, tailgate party space off of Russell Street, not too far from Raven Stadium, uh, where it kind of got its first big claim to fame. So check it out uh, when the weather gets a little warmer. All right, I'm going to end by saying I think we have a, a clip of Hammer Jacks in its heyday from our friends at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Moving Image Archive, Marmia, so thanks to them. And I'm going to end by saying uh, to all you Hammer Jack fans, keep on rocking, and to everybody, have a happy new year, and we'll see you in 2023. At 10 p.m., it's time to party, to walk in the door and have Hammer Jack smack you right in the face. All of a sudden, you're in, well, you're in Hammerjack, pal. Hammerjacks, now 12 years old, is a very large nightclub. Two, really. Louie turned an abandoned beer warehouse into a series of bars and dance floors and a concert and dance hall, the concert side. We're two bars. we got 26 bartenders. We do close to 3,000 customers through the door on a Friday and Saturday night. At midnight, the girls are dancing on the bar. It's rock and roll, and if you were to make something that by itself represented all that rock and roll means in America, it's Hammerjacks. It's so perfect, they ought to move the whole thing into a museum. Building band, bouncers, dancers, bartenders, beer and all. And label it rock and roll near the end of the 20th century. <laughs>